5 de la tarde ya están aquí. Miren, bañado. En las chanclas. Todo despeinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme las chanclas y el bañador. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. Eso. Eso. Había subido la marea y continuo para ella. Eso. Y la encontré porque te estaba, te estaba la paellera agarrada. Entre metí entre las piedras de chipiona, de faro. Y cuando entro en el restaurante me ve el cocinero con una paellera y a la otra la vende paellera. ¡Ah, no vale! ¡Ah, no vale! ¡Mira dónde llega el agua! ¡Llegaba el agua hasta el restaurante! ¡No había subido la marea! The Admiral Makarov is a tier 6 Soviet light -like cruiser that basically sums up all of Wargaming PCS favorite things. It costs about $20-$25 depending on your level of whaling is Russian so it gets the biased treatment, is premium and is in every way better than its tech tree counterpart. First of all we take a look at the armaments, which includes standard Soviet short-range crappy torpedoes, no secondary armaments, and of course, the magic super secret 360 bias cannons, which can literally phase through the ship itself. But that is okay because to balance the ship Wargaming made it so that it has no hydro, and is missing its front torpedo launchers. Now let's take an in-depth look at what makes the Makarov one of the most fun things to play with at tier 6. And that thing being the guns. These little turrets, whilst they look exactly like Nuremberg turrets, are actually better in every way. They have shorter reload, longer range, and then no trade-offs for the rest of the stats. But the main thing that sets the Makarov gun over all others is the 360 degree rotation. Despite not being possible unless the superstructure were modified, these things can really wiggle, allowing you to wind and weave with ease, whereas Nurnberg has to wait until the guns turn all the way around again to fire. The shells these things shoot are something else entirely, with great AP for chewing up destroyers, and the signature Russian E4 fires. Essentially you use the rule of thumb off, bigger than a light cruiser, low E because your AP will struggle to damage big ships. Except carriers but the biggest carrier you will ever fight normally is Hirai or Ranger, and they aren't that big. Your favorite targets should be destroyers and small cruisers. The way you drive is also important. Instead of going for the luxury German car approach, try and go for the drunk Russian at 4 a.m., winding and weaving to really dodge those enemy shells. If you are under fire, and your Stalinian armor can't stop the enemy shells, you pull a full rudder tactical, falling back to friendly lines. Then going on the counter-attack once you've held them off at the gates of Moscow. Our team captured the area. We're hit! Two thousand years later.
destroyer foundered. Any cruisers suck. One, complete the mission. Enemy torpedo spotted. Here's how to kit out your Soviet Lundberg. For slot 1 you take main battery mod 1 for better traverse. Or main battery mod 2 for faster fire. For slot 2 take rudder shift for better fighting and dodging in general. And lastly take concealment if you would rather play it safe. Or rudder shift mod 2 if you're feeling extra manly. For the captain take vigilance or emergency response. Torpedo alert. Artillery maintenance expert. And then the rest of the skills are up to you. This ship is quite possibly one of the best tier 6s, and you should probably get one before this pass ends, because who doesn't want a Soviet version of an already existing ship? By the way, I'm planning on making the IJN carrier series at some point soon, and will be more active in game and on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and on that terrible disappointment it's time to end. Good night everyone.